Hello YouTube. In this video, I am going to talk about how I solved Hanayama's rudder puzzle in just a few hours using a more structured approach rather than just random trial and error. For this approach to work, what we need to do is we will need to find a way to encode possible positions of the puzzle. This is how the puzzle arrives initially, but the kind of positions that we are going to encode are actually a subset of all the possible position, positions and they will be these kind of positions where we have an arm of the yellow piece going through a chamber on the white piece and these sides are out of the white piece. So in order to encode this first look at these three chambers these will be chambers A, B and C and then on the yellow piece there are three arms and we will call them A, B and C. So on the white piece, there are three chambers A, B, and C. And on the yellow piece, there are three arms that again we call A, B, and C. We use lowercase letters. Note that the chambers and the arms somehow match because the two pieces are actually identical. We also need to encode which side the face of the yellow piece is looking at. So the face that says rotor is looking outside right now and therefore this is outward position. If it's looking inward towards the center, then that's inward position. So if the yellow piece, the face that says rotor is looking towards the center, that's inward and we represent that with the letter I. And if it's looking outward, that we represent with the letter O. Finally, we need to encode which way the arm is going through the chamber. So if you look at this front side, which is like an arrow, the arm is going up. So that's the up position. So the vertical direction is encoded by either U, which stands for up, or D, which stands for down. For example, we can talk about the initial position here. So the initial position, uh, we are first going to move it to this state. And now we can identify it. This is chamber A, arm is C, the face is looking outward, and the direction is up. So this is ACOU. The target position is the position at which point the two pieces can separate. It is useful to first try to identify this position. Now, if you look at the grooves on the yellow and white piece and on these openings, you can tell how they should align based on the width of the groove and the, and the arms. And when you do that, you find that that position needs to be A, C, I, D. So now let's talk about the possible moves we can make on this puzzle. So from this position, we make these moves and we go through these intermediate positions that we do not encode here. And we reach this position and we can identify it as B, B, O, U. So essentially, if we go clockwise, in the chambers, then the arms go counterclockwise. This is when the out in direction is out and the up down direction is up. Now, if you invert one of these orientations, so let's say we are looking out but down, then the rule reverses such that if you go clockwise in the chambers, then the arms also change in a clockwise fashion. For example, if we, if we are in position C, B, O, D, then the next position would be B, A, O, D if we go in counterclockwise direction. Now, you can also invert the other orientation. So if you are looking inward and up, then again, chambers and arms change in the same direction. And we refer to these type of moves as move number two. An example of this one is B, C, I, U changing to A, B, I, U. And finally, if the orientations are invert and down, then again, we are back to the first type of move. And an example would be CBID to BCID. Now, the next type of move uh, that we can make is going to use this groove on the yellow piece. So we're going to bring the groove arm over here, go up. And then we're going to just come back to this position. And now we identify the position. 
And the position is, we went from BBOU to BAOD. Essentially, you can switch arms A and B, and the up-down direction also switches. This is irrespective of whether you are looking inward or outward, and it's also irrespective of the chamber. Now, the reason we can switch between A and B in this way is because this groove sits on arm C. Now, the fourth move makes use of the groove on the white piece this time. Now, what we are going to do is we are just going to take the yellow piece and kind of just rotate it around its uh, vertical axis. And again, if we identify the states here, we can see that if we are in chamber C, that's because the groove on the white piece sits opposite to the chamber C, then we can change inward to outward and vice versa. Again, the up-down direction doesn't change and the arm does not change. The example that we have just seen is going from CAOU to CAIU. Now, we have four possible moves and we are able to encode the positions that the puzzle can take. At this point, what we are going to do is we are going to develop a graph representation of the positions that the puzzle can take. Here is our initial position that the puzzle arrives in, ACOU. Since this orientation is O and U, we can make move type number one. And if we go one way, we would get CAOU. And if we go the other way, we would get BBOU. And now that we finished finding all the possible moves from this position, we put a check mark on it to remind ourselves that we finished it. And now we can look at one of the other positions that we haven't finished. For example, CAOU. We see that we can make move number one back to ACOU. That's already shown. We can make move number one to BBOU, which we now show. We can also make move number four, taking us to CAIU. And finally, we can make move number three and we reach CBOD. And again, this is all the possible moves we can make from CAOU, so we put a check mark here, and we continue this way. Next is BBOU, and now this is finished. You can pause the video here and continue finding this graph, and you will find that this is the graph that you can generate using these four moves. And we see that we have a problem here. There are only 12 possible states here, but the total number of states, since we have three chambers, three arms, in, out, and up down is actually 36. So we only found one third of the possible positions here. And more importantly, the target position ACID is not in this graph. At this point, you could guess, well, we started with ACOU. We can also start with ABOU, hypothetically, and we could also start with AAOU. Would that give us the rest of the positions? And yes, that would be right. If you carry out the same algorithm, from these starting positions, you get all 36 possible states here. That means in this puzzle, we do not have all the possible moves that we can make. We need to find a way to go in between these subgraphs and the target state sits on the third subgraph on the right side at the bottom. We need to find a way to go to that position. We have a fifth move that we need to find. Where is that fifth move? At this point, I was of course a bit disappointed, but then I realized I could actually search for this fifth move thanks to the graph that I have already generated. The fifth move should be possible somewhere on this graph. So we are going to search for a fifth move here. And what we need to do is we need to make sure we visit every possible position and we need to go through every possible edge because on each edge we have those intermediate positions and just search for a fifth move. The fifth move occurs right around position BCID, which is interesting. The starting position ACOU is quite far away from this BCID, so they did not make it easy. Here is the position BCID. First, we're gonna move it to this intermediate position. And now we can see that we can make this move where these arms go through these gaps. In fact, there are three possibilities here. You can make only the left side go through, only the right side go through, 
or you can make both of them go through. So there are three possible states that we can reach from this state. What we need to do is we just need to identify those states. The first one is BAOU, the second one is BCOD, and the third one is BAIU. And that's it. Now we have a connected graph, which means that every state is reachable. You can now find the solution by just finding a path from the initial state to the separation state, which is ACID. Here is a possible path that you can follow. You can also follow the same path to take it back. In fact, you can solve the puzzle from any given state. So let's say your friend was trying to solve the puzzle and they got stuck at some position. What you need to do is simply identify the position, find it on this graph, and then just follow some path and find the solution. So that is how I solved Hanayama's rotor puzzle. I hope you enjoyed this solution. You can download this diagram uh, from the link in the description below. And thanks for watching and happy puzzling!